Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have four great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. Talking to rich people doesn't excuse rudeness. Tax rep confronts a snobby financial advisor and assistant, leaving them flustered. The second story. Manager insulted me. I held vital knowledge. When he needed help, I declined. His staff had left with the old manager. The third story. Deported from Canada and stranded by United Airlines. The traveler finds ironic revenge in the high cost of his deportation. And the first story is... Just because you talk to rich people all day doesn't mean you can be a D. I work for a major brokerage company as a tax rep. One day I get a call from a sweet old lady who needs to get her 1099 form sent to her. This year things changed where two waves of the forms are coming out depending on the makeup for your account. She apologizes and says she isn't a client anymore, but needs to do her taxes and has not received her documents. I see that she has one that has been made available a week ago, while the second had just gone out the day before. She hasn't gotten the first yet because it's been sent to an outdated address, which our system shows in multiple places. So I call up her financial advisor to straighten it up. I tell him the lady needs not only the first 1099, but also the second that's just come out. He sends me to his assistant to deal with it. Here's the conversation. Me. Yeah, the lady needs to have her form sent to her. Assistant. She's been gone for four months. Me. Yes, well, all the same, she needs her tax documents. A loudly and deliberately scoffs into the phone. I sent them to her two weeks ago. M. You sent one to the wrong address, and since then a second has been added for a different account that you've not sent. A. There's another tax document? M. There is. A. What are you people doing over there that you can't get your act straight and send these out on time? M. We don't make these forms up here. We don't correct them either. This is the result of a bit of legislature written specifically to avoid having to send out corrected forms. A. Well, someone should really tell the branches about this. M. Again, we're not the ones making this stuff up. In my head. But you know, you really should know this stuff. It's kinda your job. To avoid bogging what's already a wall of text down, we continue to argue about the shortcomings of her systems that she's responsible for knowing, and I have no direct knowledge in, but know well enough that she's misinterpreting it. A. Alright, two fresh new tax forms on the way. M. Thank you. I placed them on mute thinking she would hang up, while I get my screens ready to jump to the other line and speak to the client. As I do, the F.A., who I did not know was listening to the whole conversation, jumps in thinking I've hung up. F.A., Virginia, are you still there? Can you believe they have these minimum wage a-holes call us in the middle of the day for this crap? They're always trying to pass the buck. I deal with multi-multi-million dollar clients all day. I don't have time to deal with every sob story. A. Oh, I know. Their systems are always misfiring and when they do, it's our fault. So we have to drop everything we're doing and bend over backwards for them. F.A. And the lady they're talking about barely avoided the low balance fees. A. Don't get me started on her. I sent her the documents two weeks ago. Does she want us to personally drop them off at her house? At this point, I unmuted and jumped back on the line. M. Hey, I'm sorry to interrupt, I just had one more thing. A. An audible and seriously satisfying yelp. M. There's already been one issue with getting her these. Can I get a direct contact number in case there's another problem? A. Uh, yeah, it's XXXXXXXXXX. M. Can I get the FAs too? If there's another mistake, I think it would be better for her to hear it from him than me. I'm just a guy at a call center, you know? Haha. <laughs> the F.A. is silent. The assistant realizes she's been abandoned by him after a few seconds and gives us his number. M. Thanks. Hey, have a good day, guys. Stay warm. You seem to be surrounded by completely uncooperative colleagues who have forgotten that politeness is also a part of professional life. It seems that when you started talking to the financial advisor's assistant, they both surrounded you with their strange comments, but you took control and did your job professionally. I mean, who would have guessed this call would turn into a comedy show on both sides of the phone? What can I say? Working at this brokerage is a real circus. And the same assistant who was yelling into the phone and pretending not to understand anything will probably start keeping a close eye on the legislative email and following important events to avoid such mishaps. And who knows, maybe this story will make her reconsider her ambition and set her up for a more grateful attitude in her relationships with her colleagues. The next story is... Turns out MMA doesn't help with filling out end-of-day reports. Was working at an SH discount retail chain. Sorta like Dollar General, but not Dollar General. Manager was an awesome guy, 
which was surprising given how awful this place was. Real diamond in the rough. We got along great and I almost closed with him. And over the course of my time there, I learned everything he did to close the store. Technically, I shouldn't have been in the office while he did that, but he didn't care about that particular rule. However, these reports had to be done quickly. Due to the low profit margins on everything, this company was super stingy about ours. There always had to be at least two people in the store for security reasons, but we were expected to finish up in GTFO within 15 minutes of locking the doors for the day, including time spent wrangling up stray customers. Anyways, was about 1.5 years in and things came to a head. See, the district manager hated my store manager because even though he was a solid worker, he refused to kiss her A. Eventually, he quit in spectacular fashion, deleted himself from their system, handed the keys to the assistant manager and just left. Over the course of the week, both assistants and three other cashiers stalkers left too. I only stayed because I was planning on leaving in three weeks anyways, and I needed the money to move. Cue a huge scramble to get people in to keep the store operational, while replacements are hired. Eventually wound up with some rotund guy for a store manager who had no clue, and a lot of other bottom of the barrel types for other positions, but this story is about the store manager specifically. So it's this guy's first day on the job solo, and he's strutting around like he's a hotshot, Bro, you make $3 an hour above minimum wage. Calm the F down. And of course, all his hotshot friends show up throughout the day so they can have a bro fest to celebrate or whatever. So him and his buddy of the hour are chilling at the front talking about MMA or some other testosterone fest topic. I'm running a register just trying to do my job like normal, but I somehow get sucked into the conversation. MMA bro. Dude, you look scrawny. You ever done MMA? Starts flexing his arm fat because he was just as rotund as the manager. Me, no, I don't do any of that. MMA bro, what a P, I bet you're an F, aren't you? Me, ignores. MMA bro, yeah, definitely an F, ha huh? Manager, for real, ha <laughs> Now I could have gotten them in trouble for that, but given that I didn't even know if this chain had an HR department, I decided that actually figuring out where to make such a report was more trouble than it was worth, since I was leaving soon anyways. I just made a mental note of the manager being a D and moved on. I got my revenge later on though. So we lock up the store and it's just me and Mr. MMA left. He goes into the glorified closet that served as the store manager office to do the closing reports. And I chilled and wandered around the back straightening a couple of things up. 15 minute cutoff comes and goes. It gets to 20 past and I scope out the manager's closet. Mr. MMA is sitting there all frustrated because he can't figure out how to do anything. They barely trained him and didn't give him any written instructions. He clearly forgot what to do and can't figure it out because the programs were all proprietary and poorly written. Mr. MMA, hey Satan, you've been here a while. Any chance you know how to do all these reports? Me, yeah, I know exactly what to do. Mr. MMA, super relieved. Oh good, so what? Me, but I'm not gonna show you. Training the store manager is way above my pay grade. Good luck. He got upset for a split second but started sweating bullets. We were already late and if he still didn't get the reports done, it would not look good for a first solo day. So while he doubles down and tries to power through the arcane software, I settle down in the break room and text my dad that I'll be late getting home that night. 30 minutes past close and I hear my name again. Mr. MMA, Satan, come here a second. Me, what? Mr. MMA, I've got $30 in my wallet right now if you help me out. Me, are you trying to pay me under the table to do something that's above my job description? Because that's what it sounds like and that could have serious repercussions for both of us if I accept it. Also $30? <laughs> you aren't buying your way out of that this easy. Mr. MMA, please, I can't figure this SH out. Me, see, that's not my problem though. Besides, you probably don't want some F helping you out anyways. Let me know when you're done so we can leave. Ended up staying 115 past closing and he still only partially figured it out. Got reamed the next day and was super deflated when I came in for shift. Tried a few more times to bribe me into helping him, but I just gave my notice instead. Didn't get put on the schedule with him for the last two weeks, so that was the last I saw him and his MMA bros. Good riddance. Sometimes when faced with injustice or unpleasant situations at work, it may seem like there's no way out. However, the way you responded to the situation when they insulted you and tried to force you to do something wrong was smart and showed your morality. This new manager who tried to use you to get his job done was clearly incapable of doing his own job and was counting on you to help him. This speaks to your strength of character and steadfastness in a situation where it would have been easy to give in. You chose the path of justice and did not let others determine your actions. You proved to be more experienced and found a courageous way to protect yourself from unjustified claims and possible rule breaking. You should be proud of the way you left this unpleasant situation 
and continue your career with your flag flying. The third story is, got deported from Canada, United Airlines then stranded me. So my new employer hired me for a project in Canada. It was a long process taking a few weeks of filling out papers and being vetted with a background check. I made full disclosure and was assured that the thing I did 30 years ago in a nasty work altercation was done and over with, and Canada would not be concerned, since I had done my community service and probation over 30 years before, and had not had any other violations. Finally got cleared to go and landed in Edmonton. Customs started asking questions and then decided, just like I was told that it was not a real issue as it was 30 years before. Then another customs agent steps in the room and they talk for about 10 minutes in whispers, and I'm called to answer more questions. Then once more it's decided that I'll be cleared for my work visa. More paperwork and in about half an hour another agent very seriously looking and much older comes in, and a hurried consultation, and they ask me more questions, and I'm definitely not going to be allowed entry since they have tightened restrictions. I'm advised that I have two solutions to my problem, and I need to return to the USA to follow either solution on my own before I return. Dang, they tell me that I seem like a nice guy, so I won't be forced to wait all night in a cell to take my return flight to USA. They allow my supervisor to collect me and he's all nice and takes me to a very nice high-end motel for the night and makes arrangements for me to be returned to customs in the AM. So far, so good. He leaves me with 30 bucks on a debit card for restaurant and plenty of phone cards. I'm set for the night. I enjoy great food and some Canadian Molson on tap. Sleep like a rock and am back first thing with my documents for permission to leave. Canada's very polite deportation document. Just before boarding United Airlines, I look at my boarding pass and it's only halfway to my point of origin. I bring this up to the Canadian customs agent, and he tells me that United Airlines was unable to make the complete booking at this terminal, and they will extend it when I get to Denver. I get to Denver and United Airlines rep tells me there's no money in it for them, and nods her head in dismissal. So my company, who by the way has informed me that with all the money invested in me, they're not going to abandon me as long as I can get this thing cleared. That part of course is my responsibility. HR rep makes a great effort and gets me the next best thing, to get me home at their expense. Eight hour layover in Denver and then I can go home. I find an outlet for my laptop and use airport Wi-Fi to go online for Reddit. While thinking about how United Airlines hoodwinked Canadian Customs and stranded me for an eight hour layover, I suddenly realize I've already had my petty revenge. I remember while Customs is making arrangements to put me on the plane back to USA, a United Airline announcer is telling the good people waiting to board the plane, I'm being deported on, that they need a volunteer who's willing to be bumped off the flight. They get no takers of course so they repeat the request, that they will of course be giving this person a new flight with transportation to a motel, and $500 in cash for waiting for the next flight to Ontario, California. Hmm, it's not much but it cheers me a bit to know I was so expensive. Also makes up a bit for the walk of shame out of Canada with a Canadian customs agent at each elbow, and the knowing looks of all the good people who don't have that problem. To Canada, no hard feelings. I loved my one night in Canada, and I appreciate the courtesy shown to me by the customs agents. I'll return and make my contributions to the Canadian oil industry. United Airlines unfairly tried to save money on you, but you were already on your way and they had to advertise you as a profitable volunteer. And while it may just be a petty revenge, you can happily accept that $500 and smile proudly at your famous deportation. I hope you enjoyed these stories. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel.